All right, if you cannot sleep, then that means that probably you are fat or you're addicted to your cell phone. Sounds harsh, but it could very well be true. I'm going to explain more in a second because we're about to give you four ways to improve your sleep. And if you want to get the full seven ways to improve your sleep, just and you're watching this on YouTube, just click on the link down below in the About section and uh, we'll send you out a PDF of this, Seven Ways to Improve Your Sleep. And if you're listening on the podcast, Go to swanwicksleep.com and I'm going to send you those seven ways in a free PDF book as well. Um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for viewing on YouTube. Thank you very much for Periscope as well. We've got Periscope people watching right now as well and listening in. They're going to ask some questions. Um, my brother Tristan Swanick is joining me right now. How are you, Tristan? Hello. Very well, thank you. Just make sure you're talking to the uh, microphone yep. there a little bit better. Very well. So Tristan is my youngest brother. I'm 40. Tristan's 36. Uh, and Tristan just came over and, and uh, like, what, three weeks ago, Tristan, I think? Uh, it'd be about four weeks ago now, I four, think. Four yeah. weeks ago. Uh, what's it like being my youngest brother? <laughs> It's an honour and a privilege, James. An honour and a privilege. I can I can hear this the the sarcasm dripping from your mouth there, um, and uh, so today we're going to be talking about we're going to be discussing in depth four ways to improve your sleep. If you struggle with sleep, then make sure you listen in. Make sure you keep watching. We're going to give you four ways in which you can fix that. You're probably wondering why uh, Tristan and I are wearing these uh, orange tinted glasses at the moment. If you're uh, indeed watching it on Periscope or watching on, uh, on YouTube or on the video version of the podcast, uh, the James Swanick Show podcast in iTunes. Make sure you go there and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we're going to explain that in just a couple of minutes, but these glasses actually improve your sleep. They will make you fall asleep faster and they will uh, uh, ensure that you have deeper sleep. Okay. Um, but uh, Tristan and I have been studying sleep for about the past 12 months. Um, I've interviewed the world's best sleep experts, people like Sean Stevenson, who's written a book, and um, Ben Greenfield is a great fitness, um, one of America's top fitness coaches. And it's so important. If, if you sleep well, well, then your body's hormones work the way they're supposed to. You get rested. You can burn fat the way you're supposed to. You're not irritable, which means you're productive and clear-headed, which means you're happy. And when you're happy, you tend to eat better. And when you eat better, you're healthier. It's, everything's entwined and, 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 and encapsulated in, in how well you sleep. Now, if you do not sleep well, you stay fat or you cannot burn down the, 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 the stubborn belly fat that you may have. Uh, and if you don't sleep well, you become irritable. And when you're irritable, you become cranky. And when you become cranky, you make other people irritable and cranky. And so you lose friends or you don't have as good quality friends. You're not as good at work. And so you don't make as much money. And when you don't make as much money, you're always struggling to pay the bills. And when you're struggling to pay the bills, you're unhappy. When you're unhappy, you eat poorly. And when you eat poorly, you uh, sleep poorly. And it's just a vicious cycle. You get where I'm going here. Tristan, what's your sleep been like over the years? Have you struggled with sleep or improved your sleep under any circumstances? Yeah, well, I, I think like, like many people, uh, early on in my years, the teens, certainly I used to sleep quite a lot. Uh, I think the, it's the old cliche that, that teens are always in bed and it's hard to get them up. Um, Later on, I started to, you know, uh, started to, to work and I started to get a lot less sleep and I certainly noticed the difference when I did start to get less sleep. You know, I found myself more irritable. I don't think I was as clear headed mm -hmm. and it was certainly a lot harder to get up and, and go to the gym. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think certainly it's certainly over the years of increasingly started to realize how just how important sleep is to good health yeah well i didn't realize how important it was until i started working out like i started working out about five or six years ago properly lifting weights and uh you know i realized that my muscles were getting bigger if i got seven or eight hours sleep but if i worked out and i was only getting five or six hours sleep i didn't put on as much muscle it's pretty extraordinary the, like the body needs rest it needs to rest, not just the body, but the brain. 
Like throughout the day, you expend so much glucose in your brain from thinking. In fact, the brain is the largest muscle in your body. It, it, what I mean by that is it takes up the most energy of anything in your body, the human brain. So you must shut it off at nighttime and relax and restore it. Otherwise, you're just fighting a, a losing battle throughout the day. So if you struggle to get to sleep at night, there's a couple of reasons why, okay? One of those reasons might be um, you're on your damn cell phone, uh, lying in bed, looking at your cell phone, checking Facebook, Instagram, emailing, texting, um, seeing, li- lying in the dark looking at your, at your cell phone. And why is that bad? Well, because it's emitting this dangerous blue light, okay? This dangerous blue light that cell phones, laptops, uh, TV screens emit. And this blue light is tricking your brain into thinking that it's daytime. But at nighttime, you don't want your brain to think that it's daytime. You want your brain to think it's nighttime. You want to naturally create a a hormone called melatonin. And melatonin is what regulates your sleep. It's what helps you sleep. But today, we're now looking at cell phones, laptop computers, all these kind of things, late into the night. And because of it, our, our... internal body clock a thing called uh the circadian rhythm is getting all out of whack so in this episode on this video and on the podcast and on periscope we're going to be uh talking a little bit more about how that disrupts your sleep and we're going to be coming up with four ways in which you can improve your sleep because it's everything it's so important uh just a reminder if you're watching on youtube just go into the about section and click on the link there and i'll send you seven ways to improve your sleep and if you're listening on the podcast go to swanwicksleep.com and uh we'll send you out a free pdf as well seven ways to improve your sleep all right so the first way um uh which is fascinating to improve your sleep is actually to get morning sun Sounds weird, doesn't it, Tristan? Do you know why? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, the body has what's called uh, a circadian rhythm, otherwise known as body clock or, you know, a sleep cycle. And what scientists have started to discover is that this circadian rhythm, the body clock, is actually regulated by light, particularly sunlight. So... In the morning after you've had hopefully your seven or eight hours sleep, the best thing to do to get your body to realize that it should be awake, it should be up and it should be active is to expose yourself to as much sunlight as you possibly can. Yeah, it's funny because the, the, the skin actually has senses. So when you literally stand outside in the sun and the light touches your skin, you're basically letting the brain know, oh, it's daytime. Okay, it's time to wake up. So, but if you wake up and you stay indoors for the first couple of hours and then you go outside, well, your body kind of still feels like it's, it's, it's sleeping. And so later on at nighttime, when it comes to actually go to sleep, you can't sleep at night because the body still thinks it's two hours earlier. So very important. First thing in the morning, get out there and walk in the sun for like 10 or 15 minutes. We have a, or I have a little balcony here where we live in, where I live in West Hollywood, where my brother's staying with me at the moment. And I, first thing in the morning, I like to go out and just stand in the sun for five minutes on my front porch and just get sunlight because I know that later on at night, that's going to help me fall to sleep. All right. So that's the first way. Make sure you get morning sunlight. Seems a bit peculiar, doesn't it? But it works. Second way, and why we are wearing these glasses right now, and I touched on it earlier, is um, we're so addicted to our cell phones right now, and all that dangerous blue light is hitting our brain. So how do we stop that? Well, we either switch off our electronics 90 minutes before we go to sleep. So that means no more cell phone, no more computer, no more TV. But that's unlikely to happen because I know you, and I know me, and I know what humans are like. We're addicted to these damn things. So what do we do if you're not going to be that that self-disciplined? Well, you need to wear a pair of blue blocking glasses, much like the pair that Tristan and I are wearing now. Now, these are called Swannies. Tristan and my last name is Swanwick, obviously. We've called them nickname. I was called Swanny at school or Swano, so we called them Swannies. And these have an orange lens which block the blue light. Just to explain a little bit how they work, Tristan. Yeah, well, very much like we just touched on, upon that sunlight tells the body to, uh, to be awake, it's time to get up and be active. 
the same the same thing happens at night time if you're exposing yourself you particularly your eyes to a lot of bright light at at night time then the body thinks that it's still day the body thinks it should still be active and it doesn't start shutting itself down for sleep the way it should be. Yeah. So you've got two choices. One, shut down your electronics. And if you're self-disciplined, you'll do it. But 99.9% .9 of you will not. <laughs> um, or you have to wear protective eyewear, blue blocking glasses. Okay. Now I'm just looking on Periscope here. I've got some comments here from Sweet Giggles 25 says they're quite stylish too. Yes, they are. Thank you very much. And then we've got a question here from someone who's obviously just arrived saying, why are you wearing sunglasses? Now here's the thing. These are not actually sunglasses. These are night glasses. Okay. They're not sunglasses. They're night glasses. You only wear these at night time. Now, do you remember the very famous song in 1985? I wear my sunglasses at night. Does anyone know who it was by? <laughs> it was by a guy called Corey Hart. In fact, I'm going to play a, a little bit of it now. Here we go. See if you can recognize <laughs> this. There we go. Corey Hart. In 1985, I was 10 years old. Tristan, you would have been five. Do you remember me playing this, this cassette? It was on a cassette called Choose 1985, which was like a compilation tape. Do you remember? I definitely remember Choose 1985, yes. But you don't remember this song? I don't remember this one particularly. There are other ones that, uh, that stick in my mind a bit more. If you remember the song, I Wear My Sunglasses at Night by Corey Hart, which I'm playing in the background right now, and you're listening on, uh, to this, tweet it out and say, yes, I remember Corey Hart. In fact, we should see if he's on Twitter, Corey Hart. So here's the, uh, the, the, the chorus. <laughs> so we'll keep playing it in the background. Eve Cuevas says, how does it help you sleep better by wearing those at night? Well, we actually just went over this, but I'm happy to, to tell you again. Just bef Let's listen to Corey Hart for a second. Here we go. Oh, it's a beautiful song. We'll just, I'll turn it down a little bit and just have it playing gently in the background because it just brings me back to 1985. Um, Tristan, see if you can find Corey Hart on Twitter, the, 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 sure. the singer of this. Let's see if he's around. If he is, we'll tweet him out and we'll make sure that you tweet him out as well, the listener and the viewer. So um, to answer your question to the Periscope uh, viewer, uh, they block dangerous blue light, okay? The blue light that's emitted from your cell phone, from your uh, laptops, from your computers. And when you block the blue light, you're, you're essentially telling the body that it's time to sleep, okay? And that's what you want. So when you fall asleep, you can fall asleep easier and then your sleep that you actually have is deeper. Now, Tristan and I released our own pair of these glasses um, uh, this week, actually. Uh, if you want to learn more, just go to swanwicksleep.com or you can click the link in the about section of this video if you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, and if you're listening, you can go to bit.ly forward slash swannies. That's B-I-T period L-Y forward slash swannies. Or again, just go to Swanwick Sleep. Um, so second way to improve your sleep is to uh, either switch off your uh, electronics 90 minutes before sleep or it's to... Uh, we'll turn Corey Hart off here, or to wear blue blocking glasses. Now, Tristan and I have developed these over the last, um, oh, damn, I wanted to keep listening to Corey Hart there. Did you find Corey Hart on Twitter? Yeah, yeah, I've got him. Yeah, he really? is, let's see, it is at Hart, H-A-R-T, Corey. I love it. C-O-R-E-Y. I love it. So make sure you send a tweet out to him as well and say, hey, I, we were, I was watching you guys wear, or James and James Swanick wear sun, your sunglasses at night. Um, it says, uh, okay, definitely purchasing. Awesome. Yeah. So if you want to purchase right now, go to bit.ly forward slash Swannies. That's B-I-T forward slash L-Y. Uh, sorry, I got that wrong. You know what, Tristan? Can you write it down maybe and we'll just show it up. Sure. We'll put it up to the Periscope uh, listeners. So let's continue here. We're, doing, we're talking about four ways to improve your sleep. Um, so let's move along. Okay. So the next way to improve your your sleep is to uh, cool your room, okay? Studies have shown that if you sleep in a cool room, like a co almost a cold room, you sleep better. In fact, there is a, uh, a study that has come out that suggests that the optimum 
uh, temperature for you to sleep in is exactly or anywhere between uh, 60 and 65 degrees, okay? So you sleep better when your body temperature is cool. So um, if you have an air conditioning in your house, put the air conditioning on even in the winter. If it's cool, open up the window and let a very cool breeze come in and just rug up because uh, studies are showing that you sleep better when your body temperature is cool. For people watching on Periscope, there's the link there. It's bit bit.ly forward slash swannies. And if you're watching on, uh, on uh, the YouTube, there you go. There's the link as well, bit.ly forward slash swannies. So yeah, so there you go. Make sure you stay cool. You sleep better when your body temperature. Keep your room around 60 to 65 degrees if you can. That is going to ensure that you, uh, you sleep better. Have you found that yourself, Tristan? Or like, I mean, look, think about it. You're in the summer. You're sweating. It's, you're tossing and turning, right? It makes sense. Yeah, it definitely does. I remember as a kid that when when there was warm weather and I stayed at a place with, with, that had air conditioning, I used to love turning the air conditioning down really low temperature and getting under the covers, having like, uh, you know, heavy blankets on and it, it just felt really nice and I always slept really well and it, it's not until I actually looked at that study that I began to realize that that's why I slept so well when, when I had the air conditioning down quite low because humans, the human body sleeps best when it's, you know, at that cool temperature. Yeah. Uh, this time a year ago, I was subletting a place in Hollywood and they didn't have an air conditioning unit and they had an overhead fan and in, in Los Angeles in, uh, late August, early September, it's like sweltering. It's so hot. And I had the worst sleep ever because it was so hot. Um, now, obviously, I've, I'm in my own place here, also in West Hollywood, but, but further up. And it's much cooler. There's no, the, the, the sunlight doesn't hit my room as much. I've got big trees outside which block it. And um, I have an air purifier and I have a, a two air conditioning units so I can sleep much easier now and, and my sleep is considerably better. And now as we record this, which is um, November, December 2015, um, it's, qu it's been quite cool. Have you noticed that the last few nights here in LA? It's been very cool, in fact. Mm. But I deliberately opened up the window of my bedroom to let the cool air come in, even though it, even though it would be warmer if I, if I shut it, mm. because I wanted to drop the temperature down uh, of the, of the room. Yeah, I've I've actually had the the fan on quite lightly as well. So even though it's been quite been very cold here in LA, I'll still have the fan on quite gently because just having that air circulating keeps the temperature down to a nice optimal level for the body to 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 rest at. All right. So there we go. So let's move along here. So we've covered um make sure you get morning sun. Uh, make sure you either switch off your electronics or you grab yourself a pair of Swannies at swanwicksleep.com, the blue blocking glasses. They're available now on Amazon. Um, and make sure you sleep in a cool room. Make sure you cool your room. The optimum temperature is 60 to 65 degrees. So let's do the fourth one, the fourth tip that we promised you here. And that is exercise in the morning. Researchers. At uh, I don't know if I've pronounced this right. Is it Appalachian State University? I'm not sure. Appalachian State University found that morning workouts are best if you want to get the best sleep at night. Now, researchers tracked the sleep patterns of participants who worked out at three different times. Okay, there was a group that worked out at seven in the morning, another group that worked out at one o'clock, and there was another one that worked out at seven o'clock at night. What they found is this, those who exercised at 7 a.m. slept longer and deeper than those who exercised at lunchtime or nighttime. In fact, the ones in the morning had up to a seven, had 75% more time in the deep sleep stage at night. So they had 75% more time in the deep sleep stage at night. So look, if you've got no choice but to exercise in the afternoon or evening, then of course exercise, right? Um, but try to do it at least four hours before you go to sleep, okay? This is because your body temperature rises with a workout and your body must be as cool as possible to sleep best. So a couple things there. Obviously, 
we are talking before the one previously, you want everything to be as cool as possible. You want your body temperature to be cool. So if you're going to work out, it's going to take you four hours to bring your body back down to a cool state because exercise mm. heats you up, right? Mm. Um, a lot of people, have you found that? Like, I don't know if you've, you've exercised late at night and then struggled to get to sleep. Definitely. Back in Australia, I, uh, I'm in a indoor soccer team and uh, some of the games are on very, very late at night. Like there was even like a 9.50 start. And what I've found is that the later the start of the game, the longer it takes me to get to sleep that night. Mm. And that's really because the, the body is all is quite warm from that physical activity. Yeah. So, so yeah, try to avoid late night exercise. If you, if you can't avoid it, of course do it because there's no way I'm going to say don't exercise, you know, but because exercise helps you sleep in general, but try to do it four hours before you go to sleep. And just know this, that if you exercise in the morning, as I do, you, you're 75% or up to 75% more in that deep sleep stage um, uh, when you actually do sleep. Let's take a couple of questions from Periscope. Um, if you're listening to this on the podcast and you don't follow me on Periscope, please download it to your phone. Um, basically, you can watch me live and uh, ask me questions live. It's, a lot, it's more interactive podcast obviously you're listening to a recording of me um having recorded this episode but on periscope you can watch and listen live um to the periscopers thanks for watching send me a question right now uh and if you're watching on youtube be sure to subscribe to my podcast the james swanick show uh in itunes and if you're listening on the podcast please write a review if you're a long time listener and i've and you've felt like you've got a lot of benefit from my podcast over the last 18 months would you really help me out it would help me out tremendously if you would write a review and just write a little review about the podcast. The iTunes algorithm likes reviews, likes um, people who subscribe. It it helps you go up the rankings. Um, So there you go. There were four ways to improve your sleep. Now, let's just um, talk about these Swannies just before uh, we wrap this up. Um, If you're watching on the video, this is the box that it will come in. Um, When you open them up, I'm just showing, if you're listening on the podcast, I'm just showing here the, the, the Swanwick box that you get. And if you're listening on the podcast, you know I've been talking about this all year. Then it comes in uh, this little case here and then you open it up and this version will actually have, um, well, this version doesn't have the plastic wrapping, but they come, it comes in plastic wrapping as well. So these are they. The good news about these is that you can actually wear them out on social occasions. So you can wear them out to dinner. In fact, we went to a Thanksgiving dinner recently up at uh, up in the Hollywood Hills with a friend friend of mine called Mark Dahmer, and uh, we wore them at this Hollywood Hills party. And there were probably about 30, 35 people, right, Tristan? Yeah. And uh, people were admiring them, weren't they? What kind of feedback mm. did you get? Mm. Well, everyone kept on asking me whereabouts you, you get them from, and uh yeah, people really liked them. Some, a lot of people had actually heard of the concept of blue blocking glasses before, mm. but were quite surprised at how stylish ours were. They'd always been looking for ones that actually looked a little bit cooler, but haven't been able to find them. They're actually most of them are like something out of the eighties. Yeah, well, well, the ones that that. Um that people have been wearing up until this point um, have looked like those kind of workman goggles, you know, like mm. you see those workmen um, when they're mowing the lawn or they're using like a wind yeah, blower. Like safety glasses. Yeah. Safety goggles, safety glasses, those orange safety goggles. And so people have been going, <laughs> people who, who are familiar with how, you know, you know, wanting to block blue light have been wearing these butt ugly <laughs> safety goggles out to dinner and people have been going, what the hell are you wearing? You look like a douche, which is true. You look like a douche. So I was trying to figure out because I'm pretty vain and I wanted to make sure that I could go out here in Hollywood at nighttime and still talk to, 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 to people and not have them think that I was a freak. And so I put the orange lens in a kind of a Ray-Ban style kind of night glass, not a sunglass frame, but like what, what a reading, what reading glasses might look like. And the end result is this, um, which you can see the eyes. So, so people, when they're talking to you, you can see, they can see your eyes because you can see through versus if you're wearing sunglasses where you look like an idiot because you're wearing sunglasses, all those safety goggles. Mm-hmm. In fact, sorry to get you to do this, Tristan, but could you just go up there and just grab the pair of sunglasses? I just want to show the difference. Like 
if you uh, just the difference between wearing sunglasses at night like Corey Hart was singing about versus wearing these ones so if I wear these for example put these sunglasses on now and I go out to dinner I look like a blues brother like I look like Jake Elwood from the blues brothers and people would look at me and go look at that douchebag wearing glasses why is that guy wearing sunglasses at night right you can't see my eyes you just like you think you're too cool for school but take these off and wear the night glasses with the orange lens you can see through you can see the eyes uh, they're kind of cool and funky some people say it, you look like bono from u2 um, it's a great conversation starter and just because someone can see your eyes they're not they don't feel uncomfortable right mm, yeah i've i've been been surprised how unremarkable most people find them actually they're, they're curious but they certainly don't find them to be strange and a lot of the time i'll have conversations with people they won't bring them up at all because they, they just seem quite normal yeah i mean and even the people who do notice them are, are admiring you and it gets yeah. your attention if you're a single person for example you want to stand out in a crowd you wear these damn things Girl, if you're a single guy, like a girl might say, what are they? Or look at you or notice you. If you're a girl, guys might come up and like try to think of a way to like approach you and have start a conversation. I might go, oh, what are those glasses about? So they're, they're, they're peculiar, but they're stylish peculiar, right? Mm. They're not, they're not, you don't look like an idiot wearing them. You actually look cool and it's a great, and like then you start to talk about the technology and how it helps you and health related People want to know how to improve their sleep. This is a common problem. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I hope this helps. Go ahead and tweet out right now, actually, uh, or, or uh, um, follow us on Instagram. You can follow Tristan and I on our Swanwick Sleep at Swanwick Sleep on Instagram. I'm on Instagram at James Swanwick. Tristan's at Tristan Swanwick. But the best thing is if you want to get more tips on how to sleep ongoing, just follow us on that Swanwick Sleep because we post tips along the way. Just a reminder, if you want to get a free book, um, a free ebook on seven ways to improve your sleep, you want to get those other three ways, go to swanwicksleep.com and we'll send you an, an ebook. If you're watching on the video, click below uh, on that link. That'll take you through. We'll send you the ebook. And if you want to grab a pair of Swannies, go to bit.ly forward slash Swannies. That's B-I-T uh, dot L-Y forward slash uh, Swannies. There it is again. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, my sleep has definitely improved since then. I now get a solid seven and a half hours every night. Sometimes it's seven, sometimes it's eight. But I, I first got into this last year when I was watching, um, uh, late night West Wing, uh, not West Wing, um, Mad Men episodes. Mm. You know, I, I never watched an episode of Mad Men. The, I think it's AMC, right? The AMC show yeah. before uh, a year ago. And so a year ago, I, for the first week, I was up watching these Mad Men episodes, sitting up at night. I'd finish it, close the computer, and then I couldn't get to sleep. And I didn't realize it was because this blue light was coming out of my brain the whole time, keeping my mind active. Then my mate Mark Dharma told me about you know the dangers of blue light, and then I put on the pair of these butt ugly goggles. And then for the next three or four weeks, I watched Mad Men episodes with the goggles on. Uh, I downloaded Flux, which is a software you can put on your computer, which lowers the, uh, the, the, the blue light emissions from your laptop computers. And I found myself falling asleep halfway through the damn Mad Men, Mad Men episode. So a lot of the times I was like, oh, I'll have to watch the second half of it tomorrow. So these things do work. They improve your sleep. Um, they're going to help you lose fat, uh, sleep better. When you sleep better, you're more active, you, you're uh, more focused. When you're more focused, you make more money. When you make more money, you're happier. When you're happier, you attract better people into your life. Uh, and you just wake up feeling refreshed. Imagine, you know, how, how much better your relationships will be for the, for the rest of your life. If you understand this and you can really optimize your sleep, Tristan. Mm, that's right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening uh, Corey Hart. What was his What was his tweet again? Hart Corey. That's so good. Hart right. Corey. Let's uh, Let's wrap this up by listening to a little bit of Corey Hart again, shall we? Just to take this out to the break. Yes. <laughs> let's go. Well, I want to find the chorus here again before we wrap this up. So cool, huh? I remember, I remember driving in mum and dad's Volvo, green Volvo, back in like 1985, 86. We're driving from Brisbane to Sydney 
and I was listening to sunglasses at night. You don't remember that? The Volvo have a cassette recorder back then? No, no, no. I had it in my cassette recorder, my, portable, my Walkman. I had it in my Walkman, yeah. And then there was another song, Tears for Fears. Like I uh, remember Tears shout. for Fears is the one. That's the one I really remember. I wear my sunglasses at night. I wear my... <laughs> this has been James Swanick and Tristan Swanick from swanwicksleep.com. Get your pair of Swannies at swanwicksleep.com. Follow us on Instagram at swanwicksleep and make sure you send a tweet out to me, Tristan and Corey Hart from Sunglasses at Night and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya!